about to get underway. The women's three-point line, okay, is 22 feet, one and three-fourths inches. It was moved to that distance back in 2021, 2022. Now, unfortunately, what they have discovered and what you're looking at right now is that in Portland, the three-point lines are different on the different sides of the court. Now, the basketball rules proposed the change after the trend showed that they needed to. Both teams have acknowledged that there is a difference and they are still agreeing to play. So again, the lines are at different distances on that court. The teams are going to play nonetheless. Let's get you out there for a preview as they walk us through what's happening right now. Well, before we start this Elite Eight game here in Portland, want to let you know of some news that happened pre-game. The NCAA was made aware that the top of the key to the three-point line, the space on either side of the floor, looked to be different. The NCAA notified both coaches at approximately noon local time, 3 Eastern, both Wes Moore and Vic Schaefer came out to the floor to take a look at it. They asked for the NCAA to measure, and they did that. The NCAA measured from the baseline to the top of the three-point line, and found there was a discrepancy on one end of the floor from the other, but both Vic Schaefer and Wes Moore have agreed to go ahead and play this game to avoid any delays. Uh, Brooke Weisbrod, what have you learned talking with Lisa Peterson of the NCAA? Yeah, she confirmed that both the floor had been the same all week and that coaches decided after both taking a look at it that they were okay with it. Now, it had been measured, but she did say it will be professionally measured tomorrow just to ensure uh, we have the exact measurements, but for right now, both coaches are okay to play the way it is. Okay, so they've been notified. They've given us the go-ahead. And now we are set to start our Elite Eight game. Courtney Lyle alongside the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck. You saw Brooke Weisbrod is also with us. And this matchup is going to be a lot of fun. Coach, you have coached in this tournament. You've won this tournament. And I know, how do you think this Elite Eight game shapes up compared to the rest of the games in the big dance? I think it's the hardest one. And I've come up with winning and going to the Final Four and coming up short. This is the hardest game because as a coach, you know what's on the other side. You know about the excitement of the Final Four. You want to get your players there but you got to stay in the moment and you've got to be able to focus in the game at hand all right let's take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by capital one Isaiah james we can't say enough 29 points 25 of those coming in the second half in the upset against stanford and you see texas's lineup it'll be the same as they had in the sweet 16 but taylor jones is available today she was cleared from concussion protocol pr protocol so more depth in the post for Texas. It has been over two decades since either one of these teams have been to a final four. We're going to make some history today here in Portland. Both of these teams, I think, were unexpected at the beginning of the season to be where they are. NC State started out the season unranked, and Texas lost their point guard in December. And look, now they're playing to go to the Final Four. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. The <laughs> adversity has been incredible with both of these groups. We're going to see two different styles defensively. NC State plays more of a gap defense. They're trying to get the ball out of the paint, but Aaliyah Moore gets two. Leah Moore coming back from that ACL injury last season. Now she's ready to help her team get back to a Final Four. If you watch NC State, you cannot help but watch Sanaya Rivers, number 22 in red, and Isaiah James, number 10 in red. These two backcourt combo, it's impressive. Can they handle the ball against the pressure of Texas? The guards are going to extend and the posts are going to protect. Madison Booker got the steal and headed the other way for Texas. And River Baldwin steps out. Well, Vic Schaefer, second most wins in program history. They're at 33 and 4, and that is after losing their All American point guard in Rory Harmon in December as Deanna Gaston hits. Texas is going to look to continue to get points in the paint. That has been their strength all season long, and Gaston has made a big part, played a big part in that. On the other side for NC State, where do most of their points come from? For NC State, it's off penetration. They're not a team that it's high in assists because they've got guards like you talked about, Sanaya Rivers and Isaiah Drake James being able to create off the bounce. Nana and Zaza, if you will. That's what they call themselves. I call them Batman and Robin, yeah. and those things are interchangeable. Yeah. 
Madison Booker, the pull-up at the free throw line. Now, she was in some foul trouble in their Sweet 16 game, was limited to just six points, her lowest total since November. There's Sanaya Rivers, the transfer from South Carolina. She won a national championship as a freshman with the Gamecocks, but wanted to move back to her home state and do something special with the Wolfpack. And her maturity on the court and off, she just, she speaks. I didn't even know when she was at South Carolina that she had a voice, but now at NC State, she is a go-to captain, a leader for NC State. It's gonna be the first foul against River Baldwin of NC State. Texas are concerned about the transition of NC State. It starts with these two, Batman and Robin. Zaniah Rivers and Isaiah James. They told us they had a conversation in the offseason. We want to be the best backcourt duo in the country. They've got an argument for that. They are leading a strong campaign for that because when those two get rolling, NC State, they're the reason that NC State's in the in playing for going to the final four. Austin missed them both at the free throw line. And the ball taken away by Mimi Collins. Rivers wants to push. Ooh. Rejecting the screen from River Baldwin, then hits her counterpart, Isaiah James, in the corner. It's like they always know where the other one is. James has had 25 and a half points in her last two games. Well, when watching them in practice yesterday, both James and Rivers were set up with opportunities to drive to the basket. And you know who was sitting out waiting to really benefit? It was Madison Hayes. Well, Leah Moore with the offensive foul. Rivers with the crossover. Hard drive to the middle, and the defense rotates in. That leaves Madison Hayes wide open. Those deep corners are going to be key. Oh, that was James in the corner yeah, down there. Isaiah James in the corner. Rivers will elevate. Madison Booker, you can tell she is trying to make up for that Sweet 16 game. She only had six points. Spent a lot of time on the bench because of some foul trouble. Foul trouble, and she was never able to get into the in a rhythm, Madison Booker. But today, early on, Texas drew up plays to get the freshman involved early. That's going to be a foul against Madison Hayes of NC State. It's Aaliyah Moore stepping up and taking the charge. She has taken 27 charges on the season, the most of anyone on Texas's roster. And that's always seemed to be a staple of a Vic Schaefer team. you got to be willing to step up and sacrifice your body. But it's not just sacrifice your body. You have to play connected on a string. You've got to take care of your teammates. If a teammate gets beat, you've got to be there in rotation. Uh-oh, the steal from Sanaya Rivers. There's Madison Hayes. Offensive foul against Mimi Collins. Well, Westmore in his 11th season. This team was unranked in the preseason because they lost five key players from last year. But guess what? They started the season 14-0, had some big wins, including a win over UConn, who is an Elite 18. Not just their five players, four of his top scorers, NC State lost. But the fill-in and the improvement of James, Rivers, and Hayes has been huge. Offensive foul against Shea Holly. Let's go with the defensive rotation. We mentioned some of those key wins for NC State. UConn was a big one. That helped propel them into the rankings for the first time. Then they beat Colorado, Duke twice, Notre Dame, Stanford. All of these teams, Sweet 16 teams. This is a team that, once they get locked in on a game plan, they are so dangerous. And this one right here in red, Sanaya Rivers has just taken her game to another level. And without the pressure, you know, Texas likes to run the dribble drive, driving hard from one side to the other. If they're using the height advantage, the strength and size of Madison Booker, you notice Booker gives it up, gets off the top, and then she becomes part of the offense. Four points for Booker. She had six in their last game. 
Isaiah James. I can already tell this is going to be a fun game. Oh. You know with the pressure of Texas that they're going to put on defensively, can NC State take care of the ball, handle that pressure? Those backdoor cuts is, is how you relieve some of that pressure. And Texas forces almost 20 turnovers a game. It's a lot of pressure to handle. Well, we've talked about her a few times. The Big 12 Player of the Year, just a freshman. We go deep inside Madison Booker. A little bit more on her background when we come back to this Elite Eight battle here in Portland. Presented by Capital One. Well, Madison Booker came in as a McDonald's All-American in her freshman season. I don't think, though, that she anticipated having to play the point guard position. Well, once Rory Horman went down December 27th with the ACL, Vic Schaefer put the keys in the hands of Madison Booker. And as a freshman, not just freshman of the year, but Big 12 player of the year, and she has led Texas to 33 wins. That's the most wins in the program's history since 1986. And, and Brooke, Madison Booker has found a sweet spot on the floor for her shot. Call her mid-range Maddie, the Big 12 Player of the Year, does her best work, 17 feet and in. She's brought this mid-range game back, and with 11 points in this tournament, she's showing how deadly it can be. She told us yesterday that the best advantage is how quickly it happens, because you can leave your defenders in the dust with just a little jab step, one dribble pull up. She talked about how Kevin Durant, Maya Moore were both inspirations for her mid-range game, and they all three have the same high release, so in a game, a women's game especially, of threes and layups, she is striking gold and hoping to bring that mid-range magic back. Let's go, baby. I think that's a key component to Texas's offense. You've got Shay Shaylee Gonzalez and Shay Holly can shoot the three. Then you've got an inside presence. When you have a point guard that can really maneuver off ball screens and get to the mid-range, pull that jumper. That's just an added key to their offense. Shay Holly with the putback. And Vic Schaefer told us sometimes he has to get on Madison Booker for giving up such shots because she is an unselfish player. She's fine with dishing it to her teammates and getting them a bucket. But her mid-range is pure. She can Boy. score. She needs to look for a shot every time she gets it. He compared it to Jordan Danbury, who was a great mid-range shooter for him at Mississippi State. Yeah. The third Elite Eight appearance for Vic Schaefer in his four seasons at Texas. It's just what Vic Schaefer does. And how does he build programs? He starts on the defensive end. Then he brings in the offense, and that dribble drive, movement offense, a lot of people want to play in that system. Isaiah James with a great defense, and over to the freshman Zoe Brooks, and this will stay with NC State. Holly got a piece of that. She's getting in the block shot category. Down to Mimi Collins. Oh, the back door for James. Didn't even touch the floor. Floating in the air, Isaiah James. James decided today she wasn't going to wait to the second half to participate in the process. If this is the first half, I can't wait for the second half. <laughs> Again, coming into this game, she had scored 55 of her 70, 70 points yeah. in the tournament in the second half. Texas will bring in Amina Muhammad to replace Aliyah Moore. Ask Anaya Rivers if she had to say something to James at halftime to get her going. And she looked at me, she goes, no. She said, I saw that look in her eyes. She was getting ready to turn it up. Well, she hadn't turned that look off. Mm. See, this is what makes NC State so dangerous. They have guards that can create off the bounce. Zoe Brooks, another freshman, who can get it done. That's going to be the first foul against Madison Booker. Something to watch. She got into early foul trouble in the Sweet 16. Only played 25 minutes in that game. Dick Schaefer said he talked to Madison Brooks about, okay, when you make one mistake, don't come back. To, oh, I'm sorry, Madison Booker, make one mistake and then let that snowball and then be another one. 
two, and three. You've got to shake that loose, get back in the game, next play. Specifically when it comes to turnovers, because she had seven turnovers in the Sweet 16 against Gonzaga. Yeah, at one point, she had three in a row. And that's when you could tell that she was having a freshman moment. Again, a player that has been so good, having to play a totally different position, a position she told us she has really never played at the point guard. When you have to look, the first and second round she played at home, it's easy to be comfortable. But when you come on the road and got to play in the Sweet 16 in the lead eight, you kind of feel the pressure. Amina Muhammad, Texas with a third opportunity. Man, four opportunities and couldn't convert. Now, all kinds of looks for Texas. No points, though, on that possession. It's a two-minute scoring drought for the Longhorns right now. Seven offensive rebounds already for Texas. That's where Texas is so dangerous. Getting on the glass. It's getting on the glass, getting in the paint, and points off turnovers. And when it comes to rebounding, Texas sixth in the nation in rebounding margin. Gaston, a beautiful pass going to the basket. Pain points. 12 for Texas. Zoe mm. Brooks saves it for the Wolf Pack. Mimi Collins in the short corner. Mimi Collins right now for NC State, the five on the floor, four guards around her, so NC State can go that five-out offense. How does Texas match up with that? With the, this lineup, I think it's good. You've got really Gaston, the only post player to play inside for the Longhorns. Zoe Brooks going to the basket, and she's fouled by Shaley Gonzalez. It'll be her first. Sanaya Rivers rubbing her neck as if something's Texas not quite right with her. And she's walking back towards midcourt. Zoe Brooks at the free throw line, the highest ranked signee ever in NC State history. Plainfield, New Jersey, member of the all-conference freshman team, was a McDonald's All-American. One for two. Uh, Leah Moore back in for Texas. They'll also bring in Hattie Phi to replace Amina Muhammad and Deanna Gaston. It's a 72 run right now for the Wolf Pack over the last three minutes. There's four guards on the floor for NC State. Texas has got to look to take advantage of the mismatch. That's Hayes and Moore right matched up at the top of the key. Inside to five. Brooks pushing. The kick out to a waiting Zaza. She already has 10. State can hold for the last shot. Oh my goodness. Woo. It's a 12 to 4 run to end the quarter for NC State, and they are up at the end of the first. Brooke will talk to Westmore when we come back. We'll be right back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, moments ago, Brooke caught up with NC State head coach Wes Moore. Coach, we saw you meeting with head coach Vic Schaefer and NCAA officials on the floor before the game. What did you learn? Uh, 
uh, just they were, they were measuring some things. So that's that's all I want to say at this time. Let's talk about the game. Your team on a, on a run to end that first quarter. How do you like the way that Isaiah James and Tanaya are playing right now? Yeah, you know, we lean on those two. They make us go. We think they can get downhill, uh, attack the rim, make people help, open things up for everybody else. They're doing a great job of that right now. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Let's check out today's most reliable player. It's brought to you by Xfinity. And Isaiah James, she already has 10 points today, Coach Pat. And she's done in a number of different ways, shooting the three, but then attacking the pressure of Texas on those backdoor cuts. She didn't get him once, but got him twice to get the easy two. Texas is going to have to find a way to slow down number 10 in red because, ooh, it's sweet right now for the Wolfpack. Chef's kiss for Isaiah James. Two for two from three. She's got 10 points, coming off 29 points to lead NC State in the Sweet 16 upset of Stanford. NC State shooting 54% from the field. Meanwhile, Texas 32%. What did you notice about the Longhorns offense? Well, the thing that Texas is looking to do and what they've always done is they're looking for bites in the paint. Paint points has been so key for Texas. And right now, they're up 14 to 8 in that department. We heard Wes Moore's answer to Brooks' first question. You saw them measuring. Again, if you're just tuning into this game, there was a discrepancy between the top of the three-point line and the baseline. But both coaches agreed to go ahead and play this game to avoid any delay to the start of the basketball game. And as, as a coach, you've got to want to just move on because you don't want it to be a distraction for your players. You cannot... Let it appear that it bothers you, because if it does, it's going to bother them. They played on this floor on Friday. They were successful, so both teams have to just be excited to play today. You do switch ends. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's two fouls on Madison Booker. It is. That was, she picked up two fouls early in their Sweet 16 game. And look at this pass. One hand bounce pass by Sanaya Rivers. Finds Zoe Brooks. That's one that Madison Booker needed to just let go. So Zoe Brooks up and in. Do you leave Madison Booker in the game? Yeah. I think you've got to let your freshman learn. And she had to sit and watch, and she kind of got out of sorts yet on Friday when he took her out. So to leave her in now and see if she learned anything from Friday that she can stay on the floor and still be productive. And again, Coach Schaefer told us the conversation he had with Madison Booker was not let, don't let one mistake turn into two or three. Maddie Fahey, a couple of chances. It's up and good. Number 10, Shay Holly has her at the top of the screen. So Shaylee Gonzalez feeding Amo, Aliyah Moore. Bounces off the back of the iron, and then Mimi Collins will come up with it. Just muscled it. Sanaya Rivers count it! And the second foul against Aaliyah Moore at half court. I saw Sanaya Rivers. She peeked out the corner of her eye and she knew where Isaiah James was. And I think that's what made the defense have to hesitate a little bit to get matched up and gave the lane to Rivers all the way to the rim. Sanaya Rivers, her first Sweet 16 or greater since her freshman year when she was at South Carolina and won a national championship. Her and James have outscored Texas already in this game. Vic Shaver told us the keys were match physicality and keep them in front, especially in transition. Right now, they've not been able to slow down the Wolfpack. Taylor Jones in the game for Texas, number 44 in white. She was not available in the Sweet 16 due to concussion protocol. 
there's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow has us going the other way as Maddie Cox slow to get up, favoring that right leg, but she'll try to walk it off. I love it when the big girls get on the floor. It's not just for the guards to dive after those 50-50 situations. All right, post player. That's it. Speaking of post players, what difference does Taylor Jones being available make for Texas? Well, she's got length, size inside. She can position and go isolation in the post on the block. There's a little mid-range Maddie for you, as Brooke talked about. She's now the fourth Longhorn freshman with 600 points. Uh-oh. And in 16 gets it back, Zoe Brooks for two. Will Texas take advantage of having Taylor Jones? They'll get a rebound from her and she'll go to the free throw line. Let's take you back to Texas's last possession and Madison Booker, a little pull up. The curl around and then just finding when that opportunity, when that window opens, she's got to be ready to take advantage and knock down that jumper. Taylor Jones, you see the cue collar on her neck. I saw to help after you get a concussion. Yeah, I saw her dad in the hotel yesterday, and I said, you know, I hope Taylor's doing okay. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, but I thought she was going to play Friday. She was out there warming up, and she looked up to him in the stands, and she, he gave her the thumbs up, and she gave him the thumbs down. Yeah. Wasn't going on Friday, but it's good to see her out there today. Yeah, you don't want to rush back from that. She took a hard fall in the second round game. Sanaya Rivers is just dicing up the Texas defense. Layups is the thing that NC State is getting because of the pressure of Texas, of spreading the floor. And when any NC State player goes to the rim, they go with the intention of getting a layup. Bottom! Isaiah James buries it. She's got 13. She is perfect from the three-point line. Three for three. Whew. Booker a bit too much. And maybe Collins has been a force on the glass. Defensively. Making sure it's one and done for Texas. And she can hit the three. All right. How do you do your work on the glass? I don't reward you at the other end. Let the big girl knock down the three. NC State. Red hot from beyond the arc. Four for five from downtown. Woo, the pack is on fire. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. It's brought to you by Instacart. Download the Instacart app and get groceries delivered in as fast as 30 minutes. Big weekend. Both the NC State men and women are in the Elite Eight for the very first time. Obviously, the women playing right now, and Isaiah James, she's been ready for the Elite Eight. So we got a little uh, girl math for you, if you will. First half, four points for Zaza. Second half, oh, let me just light them up. 25 points. What does that equal? Coach Peck, that equals the Elite Eight. Is that algebra or calculus? No, you went to Vanderbilt. <laughs> Fantastic that Isaiah James was on Friday, and she has not let up. And a 13 today, five of seven from the field. She's perfect from three. Texas has struggled to slow her down, and they're running out of time here offensively. It'll stay with the Longhorns, but three seconds on the shot clock. Texas tried to run a lot of sets to start out. Now they've gone back to that dribble drive. Let's be quick here for the Longhorns. Deanna Gaston is blocked by Sanaya Rivers. Madison Booker has to be careful. She's got two fouls. 
And they're going to call a jump ball possession arrow to the Wolf Pack. Brooke, what was the Texas huddle like a few minutes ago? Vic Schaefer was lighting his players up, talking about you're getting destroyed on the fast break. So transition defense was a big point of emphasis. He pointed at his board and said, look, they have 31 points and we have six minutes left in this game. So it was all about keeping them in front of you, addressing Madison Booker specifically. Got to keep the guards of NC State in front of you was the first key. And then they can maybe get some points up on their end. Yeah, this is such a good defensive team too, Brooke. This is a Texas team that's one of their strengths. Vic Schaefer, his longtime nickname has been the Secretary of Defense. That goes back to his days working under Gary Blair. They went to a Final Four at Arkansas, won a national championship together at Texas A&M. He's, and he's very proud of that title, Secretary of Defense. But in talking about keeping NC State in front of them, because they're giving up one of two things. Either the driver's getting all the way to the basket, or Isaiah James has been able to be open outside the three-point line on a kickout. She's guarded by Shea Holly right now. There's the three-point line. I mean, she just looks so comfortable, like she's been camping out there all weekend. A player on a mission scores the bucket, gets back. You didn't see big time celebration. She got back on defense and just went to work. All business. It's a business trip when you're trying to get to the final four. 11 0 run for the pack. Danny Cox over to Rivers. at the free throw line, buried it. Vic Schaefer trusts in his freshman. She's playing with two fouls, and she has not played hesitant. And I think that when your coach shows he's got confidence in you, that allows you to have confidence in yourself. She has eight points. She had six points in the Sweet 16. inside to Mimi Collins results in a, results in a turnover. Shaley Gonzalez. Texas 0 for 2 from 3. Alright, Zoe Brooks flexing on her fellow freshman. Well, and it was smart of her to go at Madison Booker, understanding Booker had two fouls. A 16-2 run for NC State. Texas is going to call a timeout. Isaiah James ready for this moment. 19 points. Ties a career high with five threes. Perfect from the three-point line. And she is just picking her poison. When it's there, she got the pack in control. Trying to get back to the final four. Isaiah also messed up Albany. <laughs> <laughs> Elle, don't worry, we got you covered. Azaya, yeah, uh, we're hoping Texas maybe, we're trying to call somebody, right? Like you said, to help slow down this player. She is trying to will her team into the final four. South Carolina, the number one overall seed. You heard Elle say it, still undefeated, going back to the final four. But speaking of calling somebody, uh, you may have to go to a Triangle and two or box and one because Isaiah, J Isaiah James is on one in this first half. Or Isaiah James. Isaiah James. <laughs> Don't say that time. <laughs> Zaza. Five for six on contested field goals. Five for five off of teammates' passes. And she's really accounted for 21 points. But when you look at her shot chart, it is either threes or layups. They've not forced her into any kind of mid-range shot. 
Dixie State has outscored Texas 20 to 8 here in the second quarter. Make it 21 to 8. And Madison Booker on the bench right now with two fouls. Aliyah Moore has two fouls for Texas also on their bench. So Shaylee Gonzalez takes over at the point guard position when Booker is not there. She did that for the majority of the Sweet 16 game. And a three second violation on Texas. Shay Holland match with James. Set up for, oh my goodness. And that hits the top of the backboard, so it'll be Texas ball. But the setup for the back door was there. She sold it. Just the pass coming into her on the cut was a little too late. Coming into this game, Texas had trailed for three minutes and 41 seconds total in the tournament. Today, they've trailed for over 10 minutes. That's more of what Texas needs to do. Get the ball side to side, attack the middle of the floor, and if you can turn the corner and get downhill, do so. Zania Rivers. You don't have to force it inside. Make the ball move. You'll find those seams in the defense. Shea Holly in the paint. That's another one going from right to left. And then Shea Holly able to drive back with her right hand to the middle. That bumps her up to six points now, three for three from the field. Shea Holly is on the left hand side of the screen. And see how she turns the corner, gets to the nail, to the middle, and is able to all get all the way to the basket. Then when defense rotated over, she recognized it and went right into her jump shot. There was a foul whistled against Amina Muhammad. And we've talked about, we talked about it in the Sweet 16, and also coming into this game for Texas, it's so important that Shaylee Gonzalez and Shea Holly get points. And right now, Gonzalez has not scored for Texas. Well, she was able to score on Friday, and a lot of that was when she was running the point. So maybe the offense can come for her more with the ball in her hands. Shaylee Gonzalez, her second. Watching James and Rivers talk. James is telling Sanaya, listen, I can jump. I can have a height advantage over Gonzalez. So just throw it up there. She said, I can go get it. Give me the ball. across the lead officials over at the scorers table now talking to Wes Moore. And they're gonna have the teams go to their benches here. Originally had given the foul to Shea Holly, but actually now they've put it on Shaylee Gonzalez, which is who should have it should have been on originally. So that's what they were fixing at the scorers table, and now Isaiah James will get to shoot her free throws. Just a bit short. 
Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues today. On CBS, for more information, go to NCAA.com. NC State has surged here in the second quarter, outscoring Texas 24 to 12. Neither one of these teams has been to the Final Four in over two decades. Deanna Gaston down low. When Texas is intentional about what they're looking for, they've been able to score. When there's pressure marks or hesitation, things don't go so well. Do you think that has to do with Madison Booker not out there running the point? Well, I think Shaylee Gonzalez and her experience, she was huge for them on Friday. She thinks quick. She, oh, there goes the jacket for Vic Schaefer. Gonzalez got to look for her shot. Ball bounces around. They'll take it. That's Texas's first three today. Joey Brooks hustling off to the left. The NC State Wolfpack looking for its first trip to the Final Four since 1998. Somebody that came to play, Isaiah James. She has 21 points, shooting 70% from the field, and she's with Brooke. The hot streak continues, exactly. What are you seeing from that Texas defense that's allowing you to get to the rim and hit threes? You know, they, they're sagging off me sometimes, so just hitting a three has been good for me right now. So I'm going to keep doing that and keep driving. What kind of response do you expect to see from the Longhorns? Uh, you know, they're going to still fight hard. It's still a game. You know, you never doubt another team. So we're going to keep going ourselves, and it's going to be a game. Thanks, Isaiah. Thank you. It's the third time this season that she has had 20 or more points in the first half of a game. Chef's kiss, you better believe it. NC State is up at the break, 43-31. to 31. Back to the studio with Ellen and company. You're watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Well, this is at the beginning of the game. Before the game started at 3 Eastern, noon local time, both coaches were made aware that there was a discrepancy in the measurement from the baseline to the top of the three-point line. The coaches requested that the NCAA measure that. They did that. They did say there is a discrepancy, but both coaches agreed to go ahead and play this basketball game. And so here we are at the half, NC State and Texas, one of these teams moving on to the final four. Isaiah James, she was feeling right at home. 21 points, tied a career high, five for five from three. And she's had 46 points in her last two halves of basketball. She came to this tournament ready to play. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Brooke Weisbrod with you. And both teams, both coaches, how do you handle that situation pregame to get your players ready to play in the Elite Eight? Look, if you want to continue to play, you don't let it affect you because how you handle it as a coach is how your players are going to handle it. And I'm going to tell you who handled it pretty well. Isaiah James, she was red hot from the three-point. Line. Yeah, and her counterpart, Sadia Rivers, not too bad either. Let's take a look at Get More. It's brought to you by Geico. Sadia Rivers knew exactly what to do. Vic Schaefer said, keep them in front of you. Well, Sanaya Rivers said, you can't stop me. And when she was getting into the second level, she was ready to make the pass. And then with the pressure on the perimeter, backdoor cuts. There's James getting the easy two. But this attack mode by the Wolfpack has worked well in the first half. What will be the counter from Texas in the second? Let's take a look at today's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. NC State's largest lead, 18 points. It's the largest Texas deficit of the season. Madison Booker did pick up two fouls in the first half. Vic Schaefer let her play a little bit longer than he did yesterday. She's got eight points. What adjustments do you make offensively for well, Texas? Ball movement. Keep the defense occupied on the perimeter and then look for taking advantage of your height inside in the paint, but you got to finish the chippies. There's Isaiah James, number 10 in red. She is the one that's just been lighting it up. Sonia Rivers waiting on the screen. Trying to go back door to James and it's swatted away by Shaley Gonzalez. This will stay with the Wolfpack. 
NC State has not been to the Final Four since 1998. That's their only appearance. Meanwhile, for Texas, they've been there three times, the last coming in 2003. Texas defensively, they're switching on those screens. River Baldwin trying to go around Deanna Gaston. Offensively, Texas has got to get the ball right there. Aaliyah Moore, let her cook. Shaley Gonzalez still has not scored for Texas. She averages almost 10 points a game. And that's a blocking foul, the third on Gonzalez. Offensively, on the other end for Texas, though, their spacing's not very good. And with the dribble drive, driving in on top of the post players, move the ball with the pass and then cut. some great hustle plays. She is kind of that blue collar worker for the Wolfpack. Started her career at Tennessee, then spent two seasons at Maryland, now in her second season with the Wolfpack. And she's got that NCAA experience of understanding each level, you've got to take it to another level. This is her up at the top. And on the shot, look, she doesn't quit, continues to go. Nobody touches her, no box out. She gets the putback. Shea Holly, the catch and shoot off the inbounds play. And that's going to be the fourth on Shaylee Gonzalez. Defending NC State, Texas may want to look at you know, zoning them up or going to box and one on James, but Rivers is having a field day of getting downhill and getting in the paint. Texas not a team that plays a ton of zone. Vic Schaefer teams are known for that man-to-man. -man. But sometimes when you want to get to the final four, you got to make some adjustments. And it doesn't have to be for several possessions, but just to kind of show it so that NC State has to think about what defense are you in for a minute. Yeah, they got to take a pause and read the scene, read the room. See how NC State taking a step off. They're protecting the paint, making it tough. Shea Holly just giving herself some more space. But NC State forcing the mid-range from Texas. That's what NC State now needs to do to the Longhorn. Isaiah James back over to Sanaya Rivers. Inside to Baldwin. Patience, too. Not pressing, not forcing anything. And Mimi Collins was trying to send it up to Sanaya Rivers, but throws it away. Sanaya River, River Baldwin down low, posting up two feet in the paint. Post players, when you do your work early, you make your job that much easier. Don't forget the winner of our game meets South Carolina in the Final Four. The Gamecocks able to take down Oregon State earlier today in their Elite Eight contest. That's going to be a turnover by Madison Booker. Gives it back to the Wolfpack. Each team with nine turnovers in this game. And Texas is that kind of team that can turn up defensively, start forcing turnovers and get themselves back in there. But you gotta, you gotta put a, some kind of defense on Rivers and James because they are having a field day. Well, Sanaya Rivers noticed that Jacqueline meant when Intanda checked into the game for the first time and was guarding her. She blew right by her. Moore with the putback. 
six points for Amo. That's a name we hadn't called a bunch in this game just yet, but we need to if Texas wants to compete and try to get to a Final Four. Her minutes were limited in the first half. She's only played 13 minutes in this game, picked up a couple of fouls. And River Baldwin going up with authority. Which should be a foul against Deanna Gaston. If Liam Moore's not going to get a touch on the initial offense, she's got to go to work getting on the offensive glass. That's how you can get your two and get in the stat sheet. River Baldwin at the free throw line, an 80% free throw shooter. Well, the NCAA Women's Championship continues with the Elite Eight. It runs through next Sunday when we crown a champion every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. James, that's the first three she has missed today. Started five for five. NC State, look at how they are all keeping their space between their people and keeping it really a soft defense. What does that do? That it takes away the paint and it also puts them in good rebounding position. So they come up, it's one and done for Texas. NC State heading the other direction. And once again, Texas having to settle, looking for that mid-range shot for Madison Booker, who does like that shot, but that one will be short. You see how much pressure that Texas puts on NC State. That opens up the lane and the ability to drive. They call Rivers for an offensive foul? They did. That's her first personal foul. And Aaliyah Moore stepping up again to take that charge. Moore's going to have to make more big plays. Remember how good she was on Friday, even to the point of cramping. But when she was on the floor, great things happened for the Longhorn. Shea Holly, she knows her spot. She's the only Longhorn in double figures with 12. Don't see a lot of panic from Texas. They are just keeping their nose to the grind and chipping away. Foul against Mwen and Tonda, her first. Shea Holly, six of Texas's last eight points. She's trying to get the Longhorns back in this Elite Eight game. Let's check out how they're fueling the run. Brought to you by Wendy's. the tip from Isaiah James. They've controlled most of this game, but Shea Holly trying to will Texas back into this thing in the third quarter. She's got 12 points, and she is what you call a lifetime longhorn. Her parents, there is Eric and Michelle. Eric played football at Texas. Texas was always Shea's dream school, and now she's helped them get back to the Elite Eight. A player that has stayed committed to the program, wasn't initially one of Vic Schaefer's recruits, but stayed and has been that workhorse and has increased from seven minutes a game to now in her senior year playing over 32 minutes per game. And on the defensive end, she's been one of their top defenders as a pass inside to Mwen and Tonda. She'll go to the free throw line, and Shea Holly's parents love it. <laughs> If you're Shea Holly, and this is you as a child, you have no choice but to go to Texas, right? Look at that baby Longhorn. He's got the hook'em horn sign yeah. up. <laughs> Let's go. I see where Shea gets her energy from because her mom is bringing the stands. And Michelle on her feet. 
Texas changed up into a zone. Vinny Collins had a good look at it. It rolled out. But a stop for Texas. Can they get some more points? Trying to play catch up. They have trailed by as many as 18. NC State huddle back. This is exactly what they were talking about in the huddle was we know Texas is about to make a run. We know it's coming. Let's prepare. Keep them in front of them. And then CP, you've been talking about that spacing that they're giving them. Mimi Collins was real vocal in that huddle, making sure she told her other post players, hey, there's certain times where I cannot help you. You are on your own. That's it's going to be so key defensively for NC State if they want to win. It's going to be accountability defensively. This zone changeup, though, for Texas could be beneficial. NC State has struggled, struggled to score since Texas has made that defensive change. And moments ago, back on this end, Aaliyah Moore just picked up her third foul, so something to keep an eye on. Vic Schaefer likes to have the offense in front of him so that he can call what he wants, kind of dial it up. to the corner to Collins. Crushed it! She has 10. It's the seventh three for NC State. You gotta gamble a little bit now. It'll be interesting to see. Does Vic Schaefer stay in that zone because NC State hit a three, or will they change up? Aaliyah Moore will not be denied. Texas has hit its last four shots. NC State content with using a lot of the shot clock. Texas sticking in the zone. Skip pass to the other side. They'll work it around the horn up top. Well, James was open for the one more from Rivers. She took it herself. You got to go to the hot hand. It's going to be an offensive foul against Deanna Gaston. The stars from both teams in this second half have got to turn it up. Madison Booker, the freshman for Texas, and then Aaliyah Moore for the Longhorns, the junior. They're playing with so much appreciation of being back after missing last season with injury. Texas is going to stay in this zone. And you want to shade to number 10 in red. That might get anybody else shoot it. Madison Hayes. A scramble for the rebound back to James. Fresh 20 here for the pack. It's going to stay with NC State. I think Madison Booker was the one that got a hand in there. She did. Did it get off of Hayes' leg? A nice cut. Oh, but better defense. One in Tonda on the defensive end. Again, Texas has hit, has hit its last four shots. Make it five. Deanna Gaston with the finish. Minute to go in the quarter. An 11 to three run for the Longhorns. This zone has been good for the Longhorns.
Texas has got to go Booker Moore to close out this quarter. One in time to short and off the side of the backboard at the buzzer. One tenth of a second on the clock. So that will change it to point six on the clock. Ten minutes to decide who is moving on to the final four. Brooke will talk to Texas head coach Vic Schaefer when we come back. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. CAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Moments ago, Brooke caught up with Texas head coach Vic Schaefer. Coach, an 11-6 run by your team late here in the third quarter. What becomes critical here in the fourth to get it back? We've got to guard. I mean, we we got to guard and we can't have wasted possessions. You know, that last shot's a wasted possession, but we got to defend. We've, we've not been able to handle their guards. I knew that was going to be a concern today. 16 fast break points the first half was a problem, which that was the first thing on the board today on the defensive side. So we just got to have a little more toughness. Those things are all tough. This and we got to be a little tougher today. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, well, just now the NCAA has released a statement regarding the beginning of this game and the measurements that were taken. The NCAA was notified today that the three point lines on the court at the Moda Center in Portland are not the same distance. The two head coaches were made aware of the discrepancy and elected to play a complete game on the court as is, rather than correcting the court and delaying the game. The court will be corrected before tomorrow's game in Portland. Again, the court has not changed all weekend. It's been the same court. It was just noticed today. So that is the statement from the NCAA. These were the percentages entering today. In case you're curious, the left side of the court, 28% from three. The right side, 31% from three. Not a huge difference there. Well, no, NC State shot six for nine from three in the first half. In this sec second half, they're only two of six. But I don't think Isaiah James has gotten enough attempts from that three-point line. James going down to River Baldwin. Texas outscored NC State by three in the third quarter. We saw them flip to his own defense. That certainly helped. And this will stay with the Longhorns. But Madison Booker coming off that ball screen. River Baldwin's not helping, but Booker was only looking, thinking pass. She's got to come off that ball screen thinking score first. That's something we mentioned. Coach Schaefer has gotten on to her about being a little too unselfish. Look for your shot. He wants her to be a shooter, too. Out of bounds off of Zoe Brooks. Yeah, Booker's got to be a big reason. She's got to have the mentality. It is time for her to take over. If they want a shot at a trip to Cleveland. Second attempt for Amo goes. It's been a while since either one of these programs have been to the Final Four. NC State trying to get there for just the second time. The last was in 1998. Texas hasn't been there since 2003. Zone has been a problem. It's a travel and forcing a turnover there for NC State. I'm watching the communication too of Texas. 
they're bumping off. They're always talking about where Isaiah James is and making sure they don't get overloaded. NC State gone to a zone as well. Aaliyah Moore snuck around the baseline. This stays with Texas. Madison Booker already. The freshman's got to step up. It's time to grow up and take over if the Longhorns want to advance. She has done so much for Texas this year, moving to the point guard position for the first time ever. On December 27th, when Lori Harmon, their All-American, went down with an ACL. Powerful take by River Baldwin. And then she hustled back to the other end. Madison Booker is nothing but a toss back at the top. She's got to be a threat to score from the top. How do you want NC State atta to attack this zone? They've got to be patient, and they can ball screen. Make two, guard one. All right, River Baldwin seems to be the answer, too. Well, the other thing you got to do is get in front of the post. You can't stand right behind number one in red. That's just too easy. Six points for River Baldwin here in the fourth quarter, and it forces Texas to call a timeout. You've got to be going against the zone. You've got to have a center that wants to be that centerpiece. River Baldwin doing that for the pack right now. A rematch of the national title game. LSU has captured its very first Championship. The biggest goal is to be a national champion, and that's what I did. As if Caitlin Clark needed a bigger chip on her shoulder, as if Iowa needed more motivation. <laughs> Caitlin Clark was going to come out locked in and ready to go. I'm competitive, I'm fiery. I think that's what has brought me a lot of success. LSU Iowa rematch. Just must, must see television. Are you ready for tomorrow? I am Ooh. so ready. I'm, that's why you and I, we take the red eye home. I'll be yes. at home in place in order to watch that game. I, I will think face it's going to be a thriller. The whole game. Let's do it. Iowa and LSU, the rematch tomorrow night. One of those teams moving to the Final Four. One of these teams moving on to the Final Four to face South Carolina in Cleveland. NC State has led the majority of this basketball game, a team that started the season unranked after losing five key players from last year's squad. And now here they are, elite. Now, Texas has been able to slow down Isaiah James, but they just haven't been able to consistently manufacture points on the offensive side. And Leah Moore will go to the free throw line. Time now for today's Need to Know. It's brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. What's at stake for NC State? They're looking for their second trip to the Final Four. They're seeking a ninth win against a ranked opponent this year and a 31st win on the season. They already have their second 30-win season in program history. Go back to this is a team that was unranked because of the players that they lost. And then they kick off the season, they were able to knock off a team like Connecticut. They knocked off Duke. People started paying attention and they shot right up the rank in the AP rankings. covering some ground on the back row of that zone. Now somebody needs to come bring a double. They did, they forced River Baldwin to dump it off to Rivers. And NC State stepped out of bounds, so it'll be Texas ball. We've seen Texas shift to this zone defense in the second half, and it's helped them play catch up. NC State has led by as many as 18 points. Now screen 
for Booker at the top. So she's just a passer. Oh, that's a blocking foul on River Baldwin, and she is down. In some pain, but her teammates will help her up. It's the fourth against Baldwin. But she's trying to wave coach off. She said she's fine. She doesn't want to come out of this ball game. They're going to make her take a breather here. She's had eight of NC State's last 10 points. That toughness, we have seen it here in the second half from River. And she's key in the middle of the zone. That's a big time take by Booker. That's how you take over, freshman. She's been so passive at the top, but this is how you attack the zone. She's got to understand how good she is, the strength that she has, the ability to finish. It's the third foul called against Sanaya Rivers. Did you see the Elvis lip come I'll out? I'll take it. <laughs> that may be the momentum swing the Longhorns need. Booker has 15 points, five assists. Does she continue to look for her shot? You got to, I say, scream for Booker. Make the defense decide, are they going to take, step up, help on her, or is she going to go to work? Tough shot off balance, misses everything. Meanwhile, for NC State, two-plus minute scoring drought here. James is not playing with that same balance like she did in the first half. And Zoe Brooks fouled by Shea Holly. Madison Booker, the Big 12 player and freshman of the year. 15 points, five rebounds, five assists, trying to get her offense going a little She's bit more. She's going to have to turn it up. This freshman, if she doesn't want this to be it for the Longhorns this season, more of that from number 35 in white. Booker's got to cook. Under five minutes to decide who is going to Cleveland to the final four. NC State has controlled most of this basketball game, but Texas and their stellar freshman Madison Booker trying to push the Wolfpack. Zoe Brooks will be at the free throw line for NC State. For today's star stories brought to you by Honda. Isaiah James and Madison Booker. She had 21 of those 24 points in the first half. Madison Booker with 15, 5, and 5. See Booker having to handle the basketball. She needs to be a scoring threat. coming for Taylor Jones, who is back available, missed the Sweet 16 game in concussion protocol. Jones has got the height advantage for Texas inside. As long as she keeps it high, she gets the finish and an opportunity now for the old-fashioned three-point play. That's the fourth foul against Sanaya Rivers of NC State. That could be crucial. Three-point play for Taylor Jones. Now an extended zone. These two up top playing in a tandem. Short for James, scramble for the basketball out to Texas. Booker needs to go. 
It's more on the trail, going up to a double team. What's this zone done to NC State's offense? It's gotten them out of a rhythm, but it's also playing to what Westmore wants to happen. He wants to take a lot of time off the shot clock with this lead. Allison Hayes all the way around, hitting Isaiah James. She relocates and hits a three again. Seven threes, a new career high. An NC State tournament record, seven three-pointers. Jones. Texas, now they've got to go man to man. And push and transition. I would go with a drag screen to Madison Booker and let her go to work. Booker in the corner. Why do you want to see Texas go back to the man-to-man -man defense? Well, just to speed things up, because sitting in the zone, Sanaya Rivers can just sit back, hold the basketball, and you see the time clicking off the clock. And Shea Holly is going to foul. That'll be her fourth. And Zaya Jane spotting off. She's on the, she's on the right side there, left side of your television screen. She's zoned back in from the three-point line. She was so hot in that first half. Five for five from three. She went away from a little bit in the third. Kind of got lost in the mix. But now, to close this out, number 10 in red, has got to heat back up. She's at seven threes. That, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. River Baldwin going up, drawing the foul. And that's on Shaylee Gonzalez. That'll be her fifth foul. Gonzalez transferred in from BYU. She has been so important to Texas's success. Vic Schaefer has pushed her, and she has risen to that challenge. Whatever they need, including running the point. She's played multiple positions. She brings that heart hustle to the Longhorns. So her day is done. Gonzalez, no points, 0 for 6 today. Yeah, they, they gotta go quick. Taylor Jones inside. She is fouled by Madison Hayes. And we asked this NC State team about the chip on their shoulder they had coming into the season. Unranked. Picked to finish eighth in the conference. They finished second, by the way. <laughs> they said, look, we didn't listen to any of the outside noise. We knew what we had. We went to work. And they got some quality wins. People started to pay attention to the Wolfpack, especially when they took down UConn, who is also an Elite Eight team. Well, and they approved across the board and how players worked on their game in the offseason, and that also showed up. They gave them the ability to be in the position that they're in. What about the leadership from Sanaya Rivers? How uh, big has that been? That has been tremendous. Her maturity and the trust that she's gained from her teammates to allow her to be that leader. Rivers won a national championship at South Carolina. Would love to do it at NC State in her home state. River Baldwin. So important in this second half. She's got 14 points, 5 of 7 from the field. All of her points coming in this half. Booker on the second effort, and Vic Schaefer will take a timeout. 
A minute 32 to go to decide who is going to Cleveland. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. If you hit seven threes, you're probably going to be the rewarding performance. <laughs> she has done a great job. And not only she hit seven, she only took nine. So the percentages that she shoots from the three-point line, the confidence that she entered this game with, and she was looking for her shot anytime it came to her to really open up things on the floor, and she delivered. She set the tone for NC State when it comes to three-point land. They're shooting 50% from three, nine for 18. So they haven't been just running down the floor and jacking up threes. In games that Texas has lost, what has been a problem? The opponent's been able to knock down the three-point shot. And that's what NC State has been able to do today. 27 points for Isaiah James. She had 29 points in the Sweet 16. She's had 20 or more points in now four of their last six games. And keep in mind, this is a player who is averaging about nine points less per game last year. When opportunity presents itself, when those other five players, when they moved on, it gave Isaiah James even more of a chance to be an impact offensively for this Wolfpack team, and she's taken advantage. We asked her, what's been the biggest change in your game? She said, I'm attacking more, and yeah, my three's falling a little bit better. <laughs> a little bit? I think a lot better today. Right? NC State is trying to run that clock off. Oh, Coach Schaefer didn't want that foul. It was just too late in the shot clock. You waited that long. And there are 10 seconds left on the shot clock, so now a fresh 20 for NC State. And that's the fourth against Aaliyah Moore. When do you start fouling if you're Texas? Well, I think you just you go for the steal right now. Got to try to force a turnover. If you can get that, but not now. It's eight Same seconds thing. in the shot clock. Foul on Taylor Jones, her first. Well, it's been incredible. The heart this Texas program has shown. They could have crumbled when they lost their All-American point guard on December 27th. Roy Harmon went down with that ACL injury. Vic Schaefer's talked about it. It was in a shoot-around. He had to turn it around in two hours and get this team ready to play a basketball game. Their fight, their hustle, they've never given up on what this group can do, and they've gotten back to the Elite Eight for the third time under Vic. Turning the keys over to a freshman. Madison Booker went on Big 12 Player of the Year. Taylor Jones back up and in. Now you gotta foul. You gotta lengthen this game. You gotta foul right away. So NC State was able to call a timeout, I think before the foul. Yeah, so no foul whistled there. Still NC State basketball, 40.9 seconds to go. What an incredible day this has been. I mean, we knew this game was going to be tough, but NC State, I mean, they just came out with an edge, and it was Isaiah James setting the tone right from the start. Well, and that's what you've got to do. If you want to get to the Final Four, you have got to set the tone and come in with confidence, and James did exactly that. Her and Rivers both. Rivers knew she had to get the ball inside the defense, and James knew that she had to be ready to knock down shots when that opportunity presented itself. Batman and Robin, they did exactly that. Which one's Batman, which one's Robin? We don't know. Sometimes it's changes. It's changeable. They are interchangeable. Maybe they've got two Batmans. Texas got a foul immediately. See, Texas had to recognize they had only one more second on the shot clock, and NC State was in duress. You could have gotten a possible turnover there because they were not, there weren't those uh, too many opportunities to cross the half court line. Instead, they'll put Madison Hayes, a 70% free throw shooter at the free throw line. NC State has shot 23 free throws today compared to just 11 for Texas.
Texas taking too much time and they throw it away. NC State will call timeout. The Wolf Pack can feel it on a day when both the men's and women's programs are playing in the Elite Eight. The women 28.1 seconds away from the Final Four. The game plan, the game plan was exactly what NC State needed. They tagged off, they tried to take away the paint from Texas, and then on the offensive end, getting downhill. They wanted to attack the pressure of Texas and getting those backdoor cuts or the penetrate in, kick for kick for three, and that has really worked out well for the Wolfpack. As NC State team took down the number two seed Stanford in the Sweet 16. They are less than 30 seconds away from taking down the number one seed and getting a date with South Carolina in the final four. So the pack advanced the ball 28.1 seconds. I think Texas has conceded. A chip on their shoulder is paying off. State women's basketball history has ever done. Let's get to the Final Four. And now you can put a second appearance in the Final Four on their resume. And you talked about Sanaya Rivers and having the experience of being with South Carolina, now being a part of NC State and taking that team, this team, to a Final Four for an opportunity to be a part, to actually play in a, in a, in a Final Four game. You know, that's, it's got to be rewarding four rivers to be able to be a part of this at North Carolina State. Five players in double figures. We talked about the guard duo of James and Rivers, but River Baldwin in the second half having all of her points, all 16 of them, she helped them inside too. But the leader today, Isaiah James, 27 points. She's headed to the final four and she's with Brooke. Isaiah, 29 points last night, 27 today. You're taking your team to the final four for the first time since 1998. What did it take? Oh, I'm so proud of them. You know, we work day in, day out since the summer. You know, everybody doubted us. We wasn't even ranked before the season. Now we're going to the Final Four. It, it just tells us about ourselves. You faced the Texas team that is known for their defense. Yes. You were able to break that down. What were you seeing out there? You know, just uh, you got to attack the pressure, you know. You know, it was the back door cut that was doing it for us. Uh, River Ball was doing it for us. Everybody was just taking turns. It was a whole team effort there today. River Baldwin, a big contributor, as well as your Batman and Robin's side with Sanaya. You said you want to be the best backcourt duo in the country. How did you think you proved yourself today? Oh, we did good. I'm so proud of Sanaya. You know, she had some downfalls early this year. She brought herself up, and, she, you know, she made it. we made it here. We made it here together. A school to the south awaits you in the Final Four in South Carolina. What do you think poses the biggest challenge from the Gamecocks? Uh, you know, we're going to sit on this win for a good two days, but then we're going to go straight. To, we're going to go straight. You know, we're hungry, you know. We're going to go straight to that game, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to go straight to that game, but, you know, the SEC play good defense, so, you know, we got to do the same intensity. Go ahead and celebrate with your squad. Thank you. Isaiah James, Westmore, the Wolfpack, headed to the Final Four. You know a little confetti's coming. Oh, Madison Hayes with the chase down. <laughs> <laughs> he stood there and waited for it. A team that started the season 14-0, unranked. They are going to the Final Four. South Carolina and NC State, that should be a good one at Cleveland. Oh, I think it will definitely be a good one. You've got Battle of Guards. You've got Battle of Post, River Baldwin, Camilla Cardoso, the depth of South Carolina. How will NC State handle that? That's going to be great to watch.
Don't forget tomorrow, two more Elite Eight games. We'll get to see a rematch of last year's national...